Like countless Americans, I'm grieving of the loss of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. As the second woman to serve on the Supreme Court, the first Jewish woman to do so, she was a pioneer, a, a brilliant jurist, uh, and a historical giant who blazed a trail for many. When I reflect on her life's work, I, I think of her tireless efforts for women. I think of her tireless efforts to end discrimination of any kind. And I think of her tireless work to give a voice to all of those who do not have a voice. She was fiercely committed to ensuring that justice, fairness, and equality would reign across our country. She was loyal not only to the Constitution, but to the people whose lives she knew would be affected by her rulings. Within hours uh, of the announcement of her death, as Americans across the country mourned her loss and paid homage to her legacy, some unfortunately turned their attention immediately to filling a vacancy that's, and also started to scheme on how to ram through a nominee before Election Day, only a little over 40 days from now. It is important to remember that our constitutional democracy is built upon a system of checks and balances where three co-equal branches of government. The Supreme Court plays an important role in determ determining and deciding important questions of law. And it represents a core pillar of our democracy. Its rulings profoundly shape the rights and the lives of Michiganders and all Americans. For example, later this fall, the court will be taking up a case pushed by the Trump administration to completely eliminate the Affordable Care Act. The court's ultimate decision will effectively determine the fate of health care for millions of Michiganders and Americans. If the Supreme Court strikes down protections in the Affordable Care Act, people with pre-existing conditions will be at risk of losing protections provided under the law. Insurance companies will again be able to go back to the days of discriminating against people with pre-existing conditions or even dropping a person's health coverage entirely at a time when people need health care the most. Sadly, being a woman could also again become a pre-existing health condition, leading to higher cost and limited options. Insurance companies will once again be able to impose annual or lifetime limits for coverage, raising costs and making health care unaffordable and inaccessible for many Michiganders. We also know that seniors on Medicare could pay more for prescription drugs. And anyone who has arthritis, diabetes, or cancer, or anyone who gets sick will see their health care costs go up, and far too many people may be forced into financial ruin and bankruptcy if they get sick. And all 23 million Americans could lose their current health insurance. In sum, I think it is unconscionable that President Trump, along with Senate Republicans, are attempting to undermine critical health care in the midst of a once-in-a-century public health crisis. And it's not just health care that's on the line when filling this Supreme Court vacancy. Women may lose their right to their reproductive freedom if the seminal decision of Roe versus Wade is overruled. The court may further erode protections for workers and continue to undermine unions. And the court may side with large corporate special interests rather than ensure a level playing field for workers. The appointment of a Supreme Court nominee puts an awful lot on the line. Voting rights and the core principle of one person, one vote are on the line. Upholding basic critical civil rights are on the line. Equality for millions of LGBTQ Americans who seek non-discrimination protections is on the line. And at stake is whether the court will protect our air and our water. Simply put, the Supreme Court has the final word on how we address the major challenges of our time. In a powerful sense, it is the last line of defense for everyday Americans. With so much on the line, we should not rush a Supreme Court nominee through what should be a deliberative process. Jamming this Supreme Court nomination through now will, without question, further divide 
our country and disregard the fact that the American people are now voting or soon will be in many states. In fact, later this week, voters in Michigan will begin casting their ballots. Issues before the court are life-changing, and Americans should have a voice in selecting who will choose the next nominee. A nominee, if confirmed, will serve for a lifetime. We can certainly wait for the American people to be heard. The selection of a Supreme Court nominee can certainly wait until after Inauguration Day. Mr. President, what cannot wait is to help millions of Michiganders and Americans suffering as a result of the COVID crisis. There is no question that the Senate has an important duty to advise and consent on nominations, but this body must first effectively address the unprecedented public health and economic crisis now confronting this nation. To do so, we need to come together in a bipartisan manner. And I know it's possible. We were able to come together and pass robust bipartisan coronavirus relief legislation in March and in April. And I remain ready to work in a bipartisan manner again to pass meaningful legislation again. More than 200,000 Americans have lost their lives from this pandemic, including approximately 7,000 in Michigan. The numbers are staggering. And behind these devastating statistics are people, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, husbands, wives, and children. Tragically, some are projecting that we could see a total of 400,000 Americans die by January. There are steps that Congress must take right now to stem the tide of this pandemic. Not acting now in a bipartisan way to save more lives is an unconscionable betrayal of our duty to protect the American people. We must provide relief to families and workers who have lost their jobs through no fault of their own and worry every single day about how to keep food on the table and a roof over their heads. We must support small businesses that need federal funding to stay afloat and to rebuild our economy after we defeat this COVID virus. We must support parents in schools trying to ensure students can learn in a safe environment and keep up with their studies. We must step up for communities across Michigan and the United States that have been on the front line of coronavirus response efforts. Our communities are facing massive budget challenges that could force deep cuts to essential services or layoffs of teachers and first responders and law enforcement officials. Now is the time for us to rise to the challenge. Americans are losing their lives and their livelihoods to this cruel pandemic. I know we can turn the tide, but it'll take political will. And it's not too late to save hundreds of thousands of lives and countless jobs. But we must focus on effectively confronting the coronavirus together, and we must do it now. Our focus should not be on rushing to fill a court vacancy. That can and should wait until Michiganders and the American people have had an opportunity for their voices to be heard and a new presidential term to begin. The COVID crisis is urgent, and it must be our priority first and foremost. Filling a Supreme Court vacancy can certainly wait, with voting already underway and Election Day only 42 days away. Mr. President, let's come together in a bipartisan way and together do the right thing.